Let me tell you, this thing is a handful to review. Tried it a few times. Tried tackling it a few different ways. It's, uh, it's very intimidating to review this. I guess, I guess I'm overthinking it. I, I want it to be, I really know what I want it to be. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step back and I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to set my goals, let's call them, uh, a little lower. And I'm going to I'm going to get a little more simple with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle it piece by piece, portion by portion. And I'm just going to go through it and talk about what I love, what I like, what I could have done with being a little bit different, nitpicks, let's call them. Now, this portion of the floor, by the way, it is really, really nice to have a floor, a real floor in there. That is, uh, it's something I've never really experienced having with a play set before. And by the way, play sets, I was thinking about this this morning. It's just so nice to have a play set again. That, you know, the, the whole concept of a play set, it's kind of a dying thing, you know, that with, uh, with costs of plastic going up, uh, cost of oil that is going up, and that affects the plastic costs. We're not really going to get too many more of these great play sets. But... You know, that, that's basically it. I, I really, really like the, the idea of there even being a floor in there. It's really, really cool. This, I really like. The training device, I really like. The one thing I don't really like too much about it is I wish it could spin freely. Like if you were to hold it down by the base, let's say, and give it a flick, if it would spin nice and easy like that, I, I would have preferred that, but... You know, that, that's just a minor nitpick. Of course, this uh, gaping hole bothers me as well. I'm really hoping that Mattel gets around to making, uh, as, um, as, as Scott Knightlick was pointing out, the whole uh, furniture pack for Grayskull. I really think they'll do it. I really, I hope they do it. And um, I think within that furniture pack, we'll get some sort of cover for, or a cap for that for that hole. I do know about the third party manhole cover and I really do like that, but I don't know what it is. I've never ordered anything from a third com uh, a third party company before, so I'm really kind of not experienced in that. So the whole idea is kind of, I don't know, maybe I should get around to doing it because it really does look like a really nice quality piece. There's nothing against that, you know, I, I really like it and all, but uh, I think maybe I'll just wait and see what Mattel does. And I really think that uh, what with the Four Horsemen being involved, they're going to want to address that, I'm pretty sure. So then, getting on to this, um, I was really excited to get the, the jet pack, or what I like to call the bat pack. I was really excited to get that. I read about this thing a long time ago in Roger Sweet's book, Mastering the Universe. He mentioned... Uh, among other things that was cut from the vintage Castle Grayskull was this thing, was the jet pack. And I'm glad to see it finally, um, finally made into plastic form, an actual physical form that we can own. Unfortunately, I really don't like the way that the figures wear it with this, this single belt that goes around the waist. Aside from the fact that I really think that it makes me nervous to... Now, th this is really tight on here. If you don't own Grayskull yet, just know that this is really tight. And 
I'm really worried that eventually by unfastening it and refastening it, you may run the risk of snapping one of those pegs off because from what I could tell, the body of the jetpack is made out of a harder plastic and the wings and everything else is more of a softer plastic, but anyway, that's basically it. I wish they could have just, instead of that belt, I wish they could have had just the standard, um, you know, the, the standard shoulder, shoulder straps. But again, like the, these are all just nitpicks really. Bottom line is this damn thing is just so impressive. I've, I sat in front of this thing. I've sat in front of this thing and just stared and stared and just looked at taking it all in. All of the little details, all of the, you know, your imagination just, your imagination can just go wild and it's just, it's just, all it's all these positive magical emotions that are running through your head just just uh people have uh have mentioned this and and it is true it is amazing to just look at this thing i don't think it's worn off yet i i still look at this thing and i'm in amazement that it even exists that that not only that it exists but that uh, all of us fans own it, you know, it, it's, it's just amazing. So let's get on to the throne room. I really like this. This is probably my favorite portion of the castle. I'm sure everybody else feels that way too. The throne was made very, very much like I remember seeing I remember seeing the prototype castle picture on He-Man.org and I do remember that the throne looked a lot like that. Probably, it, I, it's been a long time since I've looked at the prototype picture, but I'm, if I know the Four Horsemen, they probably did reproduce it, you know, detail for detail. One thing I'll say about the statue, uh, the throne that is is the throne is, you know, the, the throne is sculpted really nice. I have no problem with the fact that the sorceress has a hard time sitting in it and looking decent in it, because in my mind, in my little Masters of the Universe imaginary world, I really, I think some fans are really, really hung up on the filmation way of thinking. I, I prefer to think, I prefer this universe to be more the, the Mattel universe. Yeah, the Mattel kind of universe where, I don't know. But then again, I have put the sorceress in here before, so you caught me in a lie. I don't know how I feel. I have a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, a lot of preferences. It's, um, it's interesting to just stand back here and talk about all this and say this all out loud but anyway bottom line is the throne while the throne is really really beautiful it's everything it should be the figures were not made with a sitting with the ability to sit in mind Skeletor pulls it off fairly well or any uh, of your male figures will pull it off fairly well I haven't tried the women but but the men fit in there really, really well. However, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this. Is if any of the any of you have experienced the fact that the the figure tends to slide out of it because you know it, it just has nothing to. Basically, he he's sitting down. Any figure that sits in the throne is going to end up sitting really with their legs, it, they're going to end up sitting in this posture. There's no other way to do it. I have no problem with that. I really like the way that, you know, the, the way that Skeletor sits in the throne like that or any of the evil characters will sit in the throne like that. I think it's really fitting. Interesting. I think if you put a heroic figure sitting down in the throne like that, it, it just doesn't seem... The posture doesn't really seem right for a heroic warrior, but I find in my mind the posture, the way the figures are forced to sit, 
It does fit the evil warriors. Yeah, that's just me. One thing you'll notice, you may notice, is, you know what? This has to be a little tighter in here to really give, give you the idea. You may notice there's something that I have put in there for the figures to sit on. This will, this gives the figure sitting down in the throne a little bit of traction. So what it is, is basically it's this kind of stuff. Th this is, um, this is just cut from a sheet. This is stuff you can buy that's, um, it's a very, um, it's kind of like a, a rubbery material. It's like a, a traction. It's, it's used in, you find it in the kitchen department in, in any department store you go to and it comes in a roll and it's, uh, it's kind of like a, a spongy kind of rubbery material that's made for traction in, inside of cupboards. So I, I just cut a sheet of that and I rolled it up and I put it as, you know, kind of like a, uh, you know, kind of like you could imagine it being a little bit of a fur pelt or something like that. And it, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't detract from the, from the look of it. And it gives the figure a little bit of traction, so it won't just slide out of the throne, which was what was exactly what was happening to me. So aside from, ew, and while I'm on that, I, I did intend to put this stuff on the ledge. The ledge I find, a, a figure does tend to need some traction when he's standing on the ledge too. The ledge, I find the ledge is big enough, but unfortunately it slopes downward and you run into the figures kind of just, you could tell that they can physically stand on it, but they don't really stay because they just slide down it. So there's that. That's another nitpick, but the nitpicks are very few and far between. So now let's pan it over here. So this side of the castle I really love too. I really like the computer screen and the computer itself by the wall there. It's really, really nice. Got no problem with that. It, it's just the perfect amount of detail, but not going too far. You know, the, the four horsemen, they've got really good taste. They, they know that it has to be detailed, but they don't they don't lose, they don't get too far away from the idea of this. It has to look old fashioned. We want it to be new, but we, we also want it, I actually, I, I prefer for it to look a little old fashioned too. And, you know, we're really lucky that the four horsemen are in charge of the sculpting because I've, I've said it before, they, they have really great taste and I really trust their, their judgment. Anyway. The elevator. I'm sure a lot of people would have liked the elevator to be a little bit bigger. It doesn't bother me that the elevator is a little small. I don't know why, that's just my way of thinking. Now, we're getting to the end. So, the top, the top half of the castle here. Um, you'll notice I did not click in the handle yet. I think I will eventually, but I'm just enjoying looking at it like this for now. The, um, the skulls here, the golden skulls, I don't really have any desire to, to replace them with anything. I really like the way they look. This half, I really like this too. It's just really, really beautiful. The um, Okay, I will say, I do have a nitpick about the flag, about the flagpole, that is. I really wish that the flag, hmm, I don't know why, I may be, this may not be a popular opinion, but I would have preferred the flag to maybe stick in more permanently. I, I just find it, it's just a little too loose up there. You know, you, you do the slightest thing, and I, I think this, and it's such a light piece that this flag and flagpole, it's so damn light that uh, any, like even a stiff breeze, I think would just knock it down. 
I, I just, I guess I just wish that it had a way of being affixed a little more securely, you know? Then we're getting onto this. At first, I wasn't really crazy about the whole orb and orb holder, but I actually dug out my, the actual orb from my King, he, uh, my King Grayskull figure, and I put it in, in the orb holder, and yeah, I, I really do like it. I guess I do like it, so it's pretty good. So, the cannon. I really like the laser cannon a lot. It came out really, really well. Ah, unfortunately, another nitpick though. The only thing I wish could have been different is I wish that, you know, it looks great like this, but if you are to pull it out, then what you're left with is a peg on the very bottom of the cannon's stand foot. And it, it's kind of impossible to have the cannon placed anywhere but right exactly there. You know, that, that's just a minor nitpick, but I see why they did it. You know, th this way it gives it the, op the, uh, the ability to turn like this. I can really see why they did it. You know, it's probably just one of those things that couldn't have been helped. But anyway, that's my walkthrough. I'm gonna take it back a little bit here. So, let me talk about a few things while I still have a little bit of time. This is a long video, but I just really wanted to get all my thoughts out there. Just, um, I'm sure any of you who clicked the play icon, you knew that this was going to be a long video. I do have some other interesting things to say. Mm. While I say them, I'm going to put the pawn on Grayskull. Finally, I was waiting for this video to do this. So, let's see. I hope nothing gets knocked down that's too vital. What fell? I can't even see what fell. Ah. Power sword, that's all right. Yeah, it does look really good with the pawn. It really, it really caps it off well. So now, what I wanted to mention is we're all, you know, just so lucky to have this thing. And you know, I can't help but feel as, as a lot of us are, I think we're, we're all looking to the net, we're all looking to the future. We're all wondering about the possibility of a snake mountain. And man, I really do. I, I'm in that camp. I, I am just, I am ready for a snake mountain. I really need a snake mountain. A lot of people, I've heard some talk, I've read some talk about a lot of fans are really jazzed on the idea of finally getting Point Dread. A lot of people said, I need Point Dread and the Talon Fighter. I got it. I'm sorry. I, I disagree. I really disagree. Actually, I'm not sorry. I disagree. <laughs> Respectfully disagree that we, we need Snake Mountain more. Because when you step back and look at it, everything that we've gotten vehicle-wise and now playset-wise now has been devoted to the Heroic Warriors the the evil warriors are long overdue for some love the evil warriors need something or some things to tip the scales tip the balance to to their side it, you know and snake mountain would be the way to go um i would be all in i would be i would sign up for it right this very instant if we were able to so anyway, that's about it. It's gone on long enough. Put you all through it enough. So I hope you enjoyed this video, this review, my thoughts of Castle Grayskull, Masters of the Universe Classics line. So take care of yourselves, guys. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you all in the very, very near future. Bye for now.